Hello everyone, welcome to UGC e PG Partshala. I am Dr. Lubna Siddiqui from Geography Department, JMI. Today we will discuss about International Conventions, the Earth Summit, Rio Declaration and Agenda 21, which comes under the paper Environmental Geography. The objectives of this module are, number one, to acquaint the importance of Earth Summit 1992, number two, to know about the reasons that led to Rio Summit, number three, what are the goals of Rio Declaration? Number four, why was Rio Summit held? Number five, how Agenda 21 think globally and act locally? Now, introduction. International conventions and laws are an effective means for translating environmental policies that incorporate global, regional and national priorities concerns and practices into action. The development of international law is a dynamic process which requires continuous examination of not only current but also future environmental trends and challenges. International environmental law is inspired by a number of innovative ideas, concepts and principles, facilitative and enabling mechanisms and procedures. Among these are the concepts of sustainable development, the precautionary approach, polluter pays, common concern for humankind and common but differentiated responsibilities of countries. These concepts and norms have been incorporated in major environmental conventions such as the Biodiversity Convention, Desertification Convention, Climate Change Convention, etc. These unique and characteristic features of international environmental law are crucial for consolidating the interaction between environmental law and sustainable development and have attracted the attention of both professionals and academics. The Earth Summit was the biggest intergovernmental conference ever held, more correctly called the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development that is UNCED, the summit was held on 3rd to 14th June 1992 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil to coincide with World Environment Day that is June 5th, 1992. Government officials from 178 countries and between 20,000 and 30,000 individuals from, from governments, NGOs and the media participated in this event to discuss solutions for global problems such as poverty, war or the growing gap between industrialized and developing countries. It emphasizes that economic and social progress depends critically on the preservation of the natural resource base with effective measures to prevent environmental degradation. An important achievement of the summit was an agreement on the Climate Change Convention which in turn led to the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement. Another agreement was to not to carry out any activities on the lands of indigenous peoples that would cause environmental degradation or that would be culturally inappropriate. The massive interest and participation of nations and NGOs in the Earth Summit indicated a shift in global attitudes toward the environment. Scientific evidence gathered in the second half of the 20th century indicated that human activity was taking a toll on the environment. The scientific evidence also indicated that pollution and depletion of natural resources that occurred in one country could have a profound effect on the environment of other nations or the entire planet. At the Earth Summit, world leaders devised plans and policies to protect the environment by involving international, national, local governments and NGOs. Figure 2 shows three agreements of Earth Summit. Taken together, they set the agenda on global environmental issues for the next several decades. The Earth Summit made it clear that we have reached a crossroad in the human experience. 
Human activities have brought the world to this critical juncture and human activities are now the principal determinant of whether the future of our planet will be a secure and hospitable home for humankind. We are literally in command of our own evolution. The Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro was unprecedented for a UN conference. In terms of both its size and the scope of its concerns, 20 years after the first Global Environment Conference, the UN sought to help governments rethink economic development and find ways to halt the, inf to halt the destruction of irreplaceable natural resources and pollution of the planet. Hundreds of thousands of people from all walks of life were drawn into the Rio process. They persuaded their leaders to go to Rio and join other nations in making the, in making the difficult decisions needed to ensure a healthy planet for generations to come. Now, the summit's message. Number one, nothing less than a transformation of our attitudes and behavior would bring about the necessary changes it was transmitted by almost 10,000 on-site journalists and heard by millions around the world. Number two, the message reflected the complexity of the problems facing us. Number one, that poverty. Number two, as well as excessive consumption by affluent populations place damaging stress on the environment. Number three, government should recognize the need to indirect international and national plans and policies to ensure that all economic decisions fully took into account any environmental impact. Number four, the message has produced results making eco-efficiency a guiding principle for business and governments alike. Now, significance of Rio Earth Summit. The Rio Earth Summit was important in at least three respects. Number one, it was a watershed in terms of the Burgu it was a watershed in terms of the burgeoning influence of global civil society. That is, the Earth Summit was the first global conference to take place in a context of mass activism and heightened NGO involvement. Number two, the development was that Rio provided a template for future activist struggles, ensuring that from then onwards, major conferences and international summits would be accompanied by demonstrations and popular protest. The Earth Summit marked an important step in the development of global environmental policy, particularly in relation to climate change. Number three, the Earth Summit influenced the scope and focus of all subsequent UN conferences. It did this by squarely acknowledging the interrelationship between global issues. Human rights, population control, social development, gender justice, and environmental protection could no longer be viewed as discrete challenges but had to be addressed holistically. The Earth Summit, the Earth Summit succeeded in presenting new perspectives on economic progress it was lauded as the beginning of a new era and its success would be measured by the implementation locally, nationally and internationally of its agreements. Those attending the summit understood that making the necessary changes would not be easy. It would be a multi-phased process. It would take place at different rates in different parts of the world and it would require the expenditure of funds now in order to prevent much larger financial and environmental cost in the future. Now, background of Earth Summit 1992. The relationship between economic development and environmental degradation was first placed on the international agenda in 1972 at the UN Conference on the Human Environment held in Stockholm. After the conference, government set up the United Nations Environment Program, that is UNEP, which today continues to act as a global catalyst for action to protect the environment. Little, however, was done in the succeeding years to integrate environmental concerns, international economic planning, and decision-making. 
Overall, the environment continued to deteriorate and such problems as ozone depletion, global warming and water pollution grew more serious while the destruction of natural resources accelerated at an alarming rate. Now, points to be noted. Number 1. The Stockholm Conference also gave birth to the World Commission on Environment and Development known as the Brundtland Commission after its chairperson Gro Harlem Brundtland. Number 2. It was this commission's report, Our Common Future, that called a global conference on environment and development. Number 3. UNCED that is Earth Summit was in fact inspired mainly by the uh, mainly by the Brundtland Report of 1987, which linked the environmental concerns of the North with the development concerns of the South. Number four, the Brundtland Report coined the term sustainable development, pointing to both the wasteful and environmentally damaging effects of overconsumption in the developed countries and the equally destructive effects of poverty in the developing countries. Number fifth, as a consequence of Brundtland release on 22 December 1989, the United Nations General Assembly adopted resolution number 44 by 228, which set up the UN Conference on Environment and Development, which functioned at the highest possible level. Number six, the UN General Assembly's decision, that is Resolution 44 by 228 on 22nd December 1989 to convene the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development in Brazil in 1992 and UNCED Preparatory Committee open to all member governments of the United Nations was established. Number 7. Prior to the creation of the preparatory committee that is PREPCOM on 8 February 1990, United Nations Secretary General Zever Perez de Collar had announced the appointment of Morris Strong of Canada, a former member of the World Commission on Environment and Development as UNCED Secretary General. Now, the Earth Summit Agreement In Rio, Government 108 represented by heads of a state or government and adopted three major agreements aimed at changing the traditional approach to development. Number 1. Agenda 21 A comprehensive program of action for global action in all areas of sustainable development. Number 2. The Rio Declaration on Environment and Development a series of principles defining the rights and responsibilities of states. Number three, the statement of forest principles. A set of principles to underlie the sustainable management of forest worldwide, in addition to legally binding conventions aimed at preventing global climate change and the eradication of the diversity of biological species were opened for signature at the summit giving high profile to these efforts. Number 1. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and Number 2. The Convention on Biological Diversity. Now, the Rio Declaration on Environment and Development. The Rio Declaration on Environment and Development was approved by the United Nations during the Conference on Environment and Development held in Rio de Janeiro on June 1992. It was aimed at reaffirming the declaration of the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment adopted at Stockholm on June 1972. The Rio Declaration on Environment and Development is a set of principles that defines the rights and responsibilities of nations in the areas of environmental protection and sustainable development. The declaration adopted a set of principles to guide the future development. These principles define the right of people to development and their responsibilities to safeguard the common environment. The Rio Declaration states that the only way to have long-term economic progress is to link it with environmental protection. The aims of Rio Declaration will proceed towards success if nations establish a new equitable global partnership 
involving governments, their people and key sectors of societies. They must build international agreements that protect the integrity of the global environmental and the developmental system. The Rio Declaration states that nations have the right to exploit natural resources within their borders if their actions do not affect the environment in other nations. It also calls on all national and local governments to develop and implement plans that preserve the environment and natural resources for future generations. Now, the Rio Declaration is a statement of 27 principles for number 1. The guidance of national environmental behavior and enlisting general rights and obligations on environmental protection. Number 2. Placing human beings at the center of sustainable development concerns by stating that humans are entitled to a healthy and productive life in harmony with nature. Number 3. Happy and healthy life to all people in the world in order to achieve the goal of sustainable development. Number 4. The achievement of sustainable development states shall reduce and eliminate unsustainable patterns of production and consumption, exchange of scientific and technological knowledge, compensation for adverse effects of environmental damage caused by activities within their jurisdiction or control to areas beyond their jurisdiction. Number 5. Precautionary approach being widely applied by states, polluter should bear the cost of pollution, environmental impact assessment as an instrument to monitor the likely environmental effects. The documents attempts to lay out the duties and the rights of the states and peoples towards the planet. As already mentioned, it has 27 principles which were, original, which were originally supposed to be 33 and officially complements the Stockholm Declaration on the Human Environment 1972. Its 27 principles probably reflect more clearly and more concisely than any other Rio document the core philosophical assumptions and messages of the entire UNCED process that is basically it is a blend between the philosophy of the Brundtland report and the philosophy of the South Commission's report. As such, the Rio Declaration is a document that once, that once more reaffirms the quasi-religious belief in industrial development, seeks to, mobile, seeks to mobilize all human potential and natural resources to that effect and reasserts nation states as the primary units to promote such development. The preparatory debates over the declaration saw developing countries emphasizing development and equity while developed countries emphasized environmental concerns. Among the contentions of the principles was a third which affirmed the right to development, a clause intended to assure developing countries that their basic development plans would not be slowed or compromised. The United States issued a disclaimer rejecting such a right on the grounds that it might be used to override other rights such as civil rights. What all this adds up to is a clear recognition at Rio that economic backwardness damages the environment, that the resources to overcome it must come at least in part from the developed countries and that until progress is made environmentalism will be a low priority in the majority of the world's countries. Much of this was summed up in the Rio Declaration, the overarching document expressing the spirit of the Rio gathering. Now, among 27 principles it endorses is principle 6 which says, the special situation and needs of developing countries, particularly the least developed, and those most environmentally vulnerable shall be given a special priority. International actions in the field of environment and development should also address the interest and needs of all countries. Now, Agenda 21. Agenda 21, undoubt, undoubtedly Agenda 21 
undoubtedly was the most important and complete documenting that came out of the Earth Summit. It has become the blueprint for sustainability and forms the basis for sustainable development strategies. Its recommendations range from new ways to educate to new ways to care for natural resources and new ways to participate in shaping a sustainable economy. The overall objective of Agenda 21 was very ambitious for it was nothing less than designing a safe and just world with people in the south and north alike would live an equitable life within Earth's capacities. Now what is Agenda 21? Humanity stands at a defining moment in history. We are confronted with a pre with a we are confronted with a perpetuation of disparities between and within nations, a worsening of poverty, hunger, ill health and illiteracy, and the continuing deterioration of the ecosystems on which we depend for our well-being. However, integration of environment and development concerns and greater attention to them will lead to the fulfillment of basic needs, improved living standards for all, better protected and managed ecosystems and a safer, more prosperous future. No one nation can achieve this on its own, but together we can in a global partnership for sustainable development. Agenda 21 was the major document coming out of Rio and was devised to deal with some of the fundamental problems of resource degradation and aid to the developing world. It addresses many issues with respect to global sustainability and includes core chapters related to financing, the implementation of technology, transfer and institutional follow-up to UNCED. Now, the primary goal of Agenda 21 is to number one, ensure that development proceeds in a sustainable manner. Number two, the system of incentives and penalties which motivate economic behavior must be reoriented to become a strong force for sustainability. Number three, to eliminate poverty throughout the world through better management of energy and natural resources and improvement of the quality of life by ensuring access to shelter and clean water, sewage and solid waste. Number four, achieve the sustainable use of global and regional resources such as atmosphere, oceans, seas and fresh water and marine organisms. Number fifth, the final goal is for improved management of chemicals and waste. It is estimated that one third of the deaths in the third world are caused by food and water contaminated with human or industrial waste. Agenda 21 is a comprehensive plan for intergovernmental agencies, national governments, local governments and NGOs to work together to protect the environment through sustainable development. The United Nations Commission on Sustainable Development is primarily responsible for the implementation of Agenda 21. Agenda 21 recognized that developing nations and developed nations both contribute to environmental degradation. Poorer nations often have less restrictive environmental regulations and focus on economic development. Despite stronger environmental regulations, developed nations have patterns of production and consumption that pollute the environment. Agenda 21 therefore addressed environmental issues through detailed social and economic proposals. Agenda 21 proposed addressing environmental issues through combating poverty, conserving and managing natural resources, preventing deforestation, promoting sustainable agriculture, addressing production and consumption patterns and protecting the atmosphere and oceans. Figure 2 shows four categories of Agenda 21. The four categories of Agenda 21 includes the following domain. Part 1. Social and economic dimension. It includes number 1. Preamble. Number 2. International cooperation to accelerate sustainable development in developing countries. Number 3. Combating poverty. Number 4. 
changing consumption patterns. Number five, demographic dynamics and sustainability. Number six, protecting and promoting human health conditions. Number seven, promoting sustainable human settlement. Number eight, integrating environment and development in decision making. Now part two deals with conservation and management of resources for development. It includes number nine, protection of the atmosphere. Number 10, integrated approach to planning and management of land resources. Number 11, combating deforestation. Number 12, managing fragile ecosystems, combating desertification and drought. Number 13, managing fragile ecosystems, sustainable mountain development. Number 14, promoting sustainable agriculture and rural development. Number 15, conservation of biological diversity. Number 16, environmentally sound management of biotechnology. Number 17, protection of the oceans, all kinds of seas, including enclosed and semi-enclosed seas and coastal areas. Number 18, protection of the quality and supply of freshwater resources. Number 19, environmentally sound management of toxic chemicals. Number 20, environmentally sound management of hazardous waste. Number 21, environmentally sound management of solid waste and sewage related issues. Number 22, safe and environmentally sound management of radioactive waste. Now part third, is strengthening role of major groups. It includes number 23, preamble. Number 24, global action for women towards sustainable and equitable development. Number 25, children and youth in sustainable development. Number 26, recognizing and strengthening the role of indigenous people. Number 27, strengthening the role of non-governmental organizations. Number 28, local authorities initiatives in support of Agenda 21. Number 29, strengthening the role of workers and their trade unions. Number 30, strengthening the role of business and industry. Number 31, scientific and technological community. Number 32, strengthening the role of the farmers. Now part four, means of implementation. It includes number 33, financial resources and mechanisms. Number 34, technology transfer. Number 35, science for sustainable development. Number 36, promoting education, public awareness and training. Number 37, national mechanisms and international cooperation for capacity building in the developing countries. Number 38, international institutional arrangements. Number 39, international legal instruments and mechanisms. Number 40, information for decision making. For implementation of these points, a Commission on Sustainable Development was established as a high-level forum on sustainable development. The United Nations Division for Sustainable Development acts as the Secretariat to the Commission and works within the context of Agenda 21. At Rio, it was agreed that most financing for Agenda 21 would come from within a country's own public and private sectors. However, new and additional external funds were considered necessary if developing countries were to adopt sustainable development practices. Of the estimated $600 billion required annually by developing countries to implement Agenda 21, most $475 billion was to be transferred from economic activities in those countries. A further $125 billion would be needed in new and additional funds from extended sources, some $70 billion more than current levels of official development assistance that is ODA. Other monies are available for implementation of Agenda 21. The Global Environment Facility that is GEF was set up in 1991. It is implemented by, it is implemented by the World Bank, the United Nations Development Program and the United Nations Environment Program. The GEF provides funding for activities aimed at achieving global environmental benefits in four areas climate change, loss of biodiversity, 
pollution of international waters and the depletion of the ozone layer. Since 1992, some $2 billion has been pledged for activities supported by the GEF. Now, the Statement of Forest Principles. One of the key agreements reached at the 1992 Rio Earth Summit was the principles of forest management. The forest principles, that is Rio Forest Principles, is the informal name given to the non-legally binding authoritative statement of principles for a global consensus on the management, conservation and sustainable development of all types of forest, 1992, a document produced at the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, that is UNCED, informally known as the Earth Summit. It is a non-legally binding document that makes several recommendations for conservation and sustainable development. Forestry. The principles of forest management stated that forests with their complex ecology are essential to economic development and the maintenance of all forms of life. Forests provide wood, food and medicine and contain a biological diversity as yet not fully uncovered. They also act as reservoirs that is sinks for carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas released into the atmosphere by human processes which may be contributing towards global warming. As well as the scientific benefits of forest, they also provide a home to wildlife and fulfill our cultural and spiritual needs. The statement of forest principles called for sustainable management of forest worldwide. It is a non-binding document produced through compromise after developed nations refused to pay for the setting aside of national forest by developing nations. At the Earth Summit, the negotiation of the document was complicated by demands by developing nations in the group of 77 for increased foreign aid in order to pay for the setting aside of forest reserves. Developed nations resisted those demands and the final document was a compromise. The principles of forest management assert the right of nations to profit from their own forest resources but recommend that this should occur within a framework of forest protection, management and conservation. The principles are not legally binding but provide recommendations on sustainable practice. The statement of forest principles was the first global consensus reached on forest. Among its provisions, number one, that all countries, notably developed countries, should make an effort to green the world through reforestation and forest conservation. Number two, that states have a right to develop forest according to their social, economic, ecological, cultural and spiritual needs of present and future generations. Number three, unique examples of forest should be protected, for example, ancient forest and forest with cultural, historical, spiritual and religious importance. Number four, Pollutants that harm forest should be controlled. Number five, forestry plants should consider the non-economic values of forest and the environmental consequences of their management. Forest degradation should be avoided. Number six, that specific financial resources should be provided to develop programs that encourage economic and social substitution policies. Now, conclusions. The Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro was unprecedented for a UN conference in forms of both its size and the scope of its concerns. Twenty years after the first global environment conference, the UN sought to help governments rethink economic development and find ways to halt the destruction of irreplaceable natural resources and pollution of the planet. Hundreds of thousands of people from all walks of life were drawn into the Rio process. They persuaded their leaders to go to Rio and join other nations in making the difficult decisions needed to ensure a healthy planet for generations to come. The outcome of the Earth Summit 1992 conference, in particular Agenda 21 and the Rio principles, became instrumental in promoting the development 
and strengthening of institutional architecture for environmental protection and sustainable development at the national and international levels. I hope you have understood the concept of international conventions, the Earth Summit, Rio Declaration and Agenda 21. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.